this month for Get Creative, we are going to get a little bit messy and play around with some abstract forms of painting techniques. So uh, here I've set up my space and covered the table with cardboard just to try and minimize our mess. And I'd recommend that you put something down that is pretty thick, cardboard or plastic works pretty well. Um, I have on the side four cups um, and I'm going to be prepping to use each color that I'm going to use individually. So you'll want to have each color um, in its own separate cup. And uh, I'm going to put a push pin in the back of each of the four corners of my canvas just to give it a little bit of a foot uh, once we start pouring just so that it doesn't uh, stick onto the uh, cardboard or whatever we place down. Um, so we're going to start by prepping our cups with um, our flood or Floetrol or our mixing solution. Um, it's going to be a uh, marked on your kit as pouring medium, um, but if you're looking to purchase things yourself, um, it's also called Floetrol. Um, and then if you find it easier, you can start with the water and the paint as well. So all three of those things are what we're going to be mixing into our cups here. Um, and the ratio we're going to use is two parts of the Floetrol to one equal part of the water and the paint and we're going to again be doing that in each color individually. Um, in the order that you do each of these for this particular uh, piece, the individual colors, doesn't matter. So if you find it easier to mix the individual, the paint and the water first since you're doing equal parts of that and then you'll do another full uh, two parts of the Floetrol own hub. If you find that easier for yourself, you can do that, absolutely. Um, we're also going to be adding in a few drops of the silicone. Um, only add this to one or maybe two of your colors, and I'd recommend adding them to ones that you actually have like nice brighter colors. You don't really want to add that to your white or anything that's uh, you know, your more basic colors, the silicone is going to give us like really lovely big cells that we're working with. And that is going, uh, we're going to really want to see that spread when we are working with our bigger, brighter colors, um, rather than just seeing a, a bunch of white, right? So, so add in a couple of drops of that and uh, no more than, I would say, two or three drops, and otherwise it's just going to be a mess on your canvas. And you then mix everything up, mix all of your individual pieces, uh, all of your individual cups, and get them uh, well combined. You're really looking to make sure that all of your all of your pieces are combined, and the white is going to be the hardest to tell um, because your pouring medium and your paint are the same color. Everything else will be a little bit easier because you can actually tell when your paint and your pouring medium are mixed because the colors are a little different. Um, once our paint cups, all of our individual paints are prepped, we're going to start um, prepping our paint, our pouring cup. So you will eventually have uh, five cups, or at least the, I had five cups. You will have the number of colors that you will use plus one uh, number of cups that you're going to eventually use. So uh, you're going to the sides just so that we're not trying to disturb any of the layers that we've created. Um, once you get to the end, if you want to uh, get a little bit wild and pour a little extra white uh, in the middle, I didn't do that today, but you absolutely can. Uh, white is going to be heavier than any other paints. It's just a happenstance of uh, the way that chemically that paint happens to be. So uh, white is going to be a little bit heavier than the other paints, and it will pull down your center uh, of your paint and it will create a little extra layer 
uh, effect as you're in your cup when you get to pour. Um, so if you want to play around with that, you, maybe not on your first one, maybe you want to play around with it on a second or third attempt. Um, that's, that's another little bit of the technique that you can you can test around. So once we actually do the flip cup, for, for the flip cup method, once we actually have our pouring cup ready, uh, we're going to pick up our canvas, place it on top, and uh, this is the, this is the kind of tricky bit. The like, we really have to have, be brave here. Um, we are going to hold the top of the cup and our canvas and hold them uh, together. And just as you can see, we're just going to flip it. Um, there is a little bit of suction that actually comes through, so you shouldn't, you shouldn't uh, see too much uh, that actually creates like too many big gaps in, in your pour. It shouldn't spill all over as you flip. Um, that's what's helpful about having a hand on top of the canvas when, as you actually do the flip, because it helps uh, create that little bit of suction, which keeps at least a little bit of the pay, at least a little bit of the mess down for this piece of it as, anyway. And then once you have it completely flipped back uh, right side up on your uh, cardboard, then you're just going to gently squeeze the edges uh, or the sides of your cup to release that vacuum, release that suction, and you're going to start seeing your paint Squir squeeze out, it's going to start releasing, and then this is the fun part. Uh, so it's going to start coming all out and moving all around. Um, if you're liking how it's going, you can completely leave it alone. If you really want it to reach the edge of your canvas, completely cover your canvas, then you can uh, move your canvas around, pick it up, and uh, kind of shift it around, just kind of gently negotiate around and kind of just watch where your paint is going and kind of move it around. As you can see, I'm just tilting it, uh, trying to get the paint all the way to the edge and all the way to the four corners. Get, catching those four corners is always the hardest bit. Um, I recommend that you leave this to dry for several days if you have the ability to. Uh, you will be able to tell when it's dry when it starts to get uh, actually matte. So it won't be as shiny as it is when it's wet and that will be very helpful for you to be able to tell, oh, this is this is pretty dry. Um, you can see I'm also, I'm kind of taking my fingers that have now gotten covered in paint and just touching the corners, just trying to help convince the paint to go uncover the corners as well. And you're welcome to do that if you're trying to just cover up one last little spot or something like that. Um, if you're able to just leave something in place, that's probably the best. Um, if you need to move it, you absolutely can but uh, trying to do so with as little disturb, little, uh, disturb it as little as possible uh, to get the full effect of your, your lovely pour. So uh, thank you so much for joining us. It's a very fun uh, project and we'll see you soon.